Hey guys, so I wanted to show real quick how to start up the Android emulator if you're unfamiliar. You're going to need Android Studio, which looks like this. And what I usually do is I just create a project because you have to be in this view right here um, to be able to access this purple thing in the top right. So there's a little icon that's purple. You click on that and you can see your virtual devices right here. You're going to want to create a virtual device. I already have one, a Pixel 2 right here. Uh, you can go ahead and click play later so you can see I've done an expo project before so it immediately pops that up um, if you haven't and by the way you can close Android Studio after that because Android Studio is a uh, performance hog um, what I usually do is I like to just clear this out uh, if it'll let me um, and just restart expo just to make sure it uh, starts fresh um, but if you don't get Expo pop up right away, which you shouldn't if you've never done Expo before, um, then you can just come over here and run Yarn Android from our uh, app directory and that'll go ahead. Uh, and now you should have a Expo app that looks like so. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get started installing some packages for application. So we're going to use for routing, React Router Native, so we're gonna install that. Um, for UI, we're gonna use React Native Elements and then we're gonna set up GraphQL stuff. So that's gonna be the usual stack right here. And you'll notice this is the exact same we use for our website. So Apollo client, the cache, um, make HTTP requests, and then lastly, GraphQL itself. And I forgot one package. We also need uh, React uh, Apollo. And actually, do we need GraphQL tag? We probably need GraphQL tag too. So let's install those two as well. All right, and we also need some dev dependencies. So we need, we're using TypeScript, so we're gonna need the types for React Router, and then also for React Native Elements. All right, so now we can go ahead and get started. So inside of our app, we're going to create a source folder. And inside of source, we're gonna create an Apollo.TypeScript. And we can actually copy the same code that we're using for our website. And pretty much the exact same thing's gonna work except for one small difference. Well, really two small differences. One, we're not gonna be sending credentials, so we can get rid of that part. And that's because there's really no cookies with this. And then secondly, the URL. So now the URL is kind of interesting. Now, because I'm using Android, I can't just access localhost. So I need to use this address right here. Um, so what I really need is a variable here called host and for Android it's going to be this so this is Android and then for iOS it's just localhost you can just use localhost to access our server so what we're going to do is uh, get some platform specific code so there's more information about react native how this works basically we can import the platform module from react native and check whether we're on iOS or Android and then uh, we do different things. So let's go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to get rid of the style sheet. So to specify which host we're on, I'm going to say platform.os. If we're on iOS, then we can use localhost. Otherwise, use that. And uh, I guess I'll put HTTP in front of it. So now in the URL or URI, I'm going to say host, and then I'm going to say slash GraphQL. Um, actually, just kidding, I don't even think I need to specify GraphQL. I think I just need to specify the port. Um, I forgot our server's not using slash GraphQL. All right, so our server's running on port 4000, so uh, Whichever host we're using, we just specify the port. I guess it could be even different in that case. You could also just put 4000 up here. This might be the best option. Reason why is uh, whenever we deploy, we don't want to just slap on 4000 at the end. All right, so now, depending on whether we're on iOS or Android, we're going to be uh, making different requests, which is fine. We're still hitting the same server at the end. I'm also going to create a um, index.ts and uh, I know ooh, this should be in index.tsx 
and we have this app outside here. I actually don't want to do anything with this app. I'm just going to um, say export default and we're going to import app from dot slash source slash index and then we're just going to export that. So we're not actually going to do anything inside this app. So everything's going to happen here. So import star as react from react and uh, I guess I can use my little shortcut um, and then here I'm going to say this is the app and I'm going to export default it. Uh, here I'm going to export default because uh, that's what we're doing over here and I'm going to wrap this with the Apollo provider so this is basically where our whole app is going to be so we need to import Apollo provider from React Apollo and we need to import the client from dot slash Apollo and I think um, okay we exported it so we need to wrap this like so all right we're going to specify the client here and you'll notice this is pretty much the same setup as we did for the website over there and then we're going to have uh, routes uh, so let's let's actually just compare real quickly so our website um, you'll see it's very similar um, only difference is we're using like react dom here which we don't, we don't need that part but yep now we're going to set up our routes so I'll give this a save I'm going to create a folder called I guess I don't even have to create a folder well you know why not we did that on a website we can do the same thing here and we'll create index.tsx and here we can actually kind of copy again what we did for um, over here because we're going to use the same logic alright so this is the router we use for um, the website so instead of react router dom we're going to say react router native and instead of browser router we're going to say native router um, so let's just switch that um, we're fine using a switch here route we can use as well slash register is perfect we need to create uh, this register connector so I'm going to create a modules and we'll say register connector dot tsx and for now we're just going to say hello so register connector and now I want to say hello using the uh, one of the react native elements just to make sure it's working so why don't we just use a button and we can copy just this simple one um, what well, needs to have an on click on press is missing alright so oops let's create a function for it real quick on press we're going to console.log uh, button pressed and by the way um, on press just on press so console logs in react native we're using expo so whenever we just do yarn start we're gonna see console logs uh, there uh, inside just our terminal so for example this alright so we have this route set up um, let's create a register folder and put it inside of there so it's the same structure um, here could not find declaration for react router native we added the types um, maybe maybe you don't you don't add react router native I'll double check this in a second um, we want to import this now so import routes from dot slash routes and again we exported it so we'll import it like that all right so we pretty much have our app set up now at least we have Apollo working or at least should be switching now we'll actually test this in the next video um, to make sure this is correct with these right here um, we set up an initial route and I'm going to change this to just that so we can actually see it because I want to run this right now um, the type right here I want to check now so if we come over here to our website we can see um, as a dev dependency yes so we actually installed react router dom the type for that so we, we don't actually use react router so I installed the wrong type so as a dev dependency we can remove this and add react router dom
or sorry, React. So we want at types React router native is the type we want. And I'm just gonna kill it from here, like so, and we'll install that. All right, so that error should go away now. We can verify that if we come over back to our routes. And I'm just going to restart. And we'll let that do its thing. And we're gonna go ahead and do yarn start to start the server. All right, so the server started up. And if I hover over stuff over here, we can see the types. So it looks like that did work as well, adding that uh, as a dev dependency. So again, we're gonna try copying this. And we wanna come over and paste in our URL, but there is actually no plus sign in the emulator. Now, for whatever reason, it's different between iOS and Android. So there's this little explore tab and that's how you access this on Android. So you actually hit search and you paste in your project URL here. Now, I don't know about you, I don't wanna always paste in, well, there is no really way to paste in, at least from the keyboard or whatnot. So I looked it up and the way you actually paste, and that's why I have my terminal up right here, is you can, can actually paste things uh, from the terminal into here. So if I do adb shell input text, and then I can put my text here, um, instead of just typing it myself, I can get it to type for me. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then we can open up our project and we can see if it goes ahead and renders our button after it fin finishes bundling. All right, so we got a nasty little error here. Now, Android uh, errors are not very helpful, at least right here. If we come back over here, we can see a much uh, nicer error. So it says it could not find the preset React Native relative to the directory. Now, whenever you read this type of error, at least when you have a Yarn workspace set up, it's usually because of Yarn workspaces and modules being in the wrong node modules. So basically, if you see right here, um, React Native Elements is inside of the root directory node modules. Uh, but our React Native, that is inside of our app node modules because we said no hoist. So what we need to do is no hoist our React Native elements as well. Um, so whenever you see this type of error, usually what you can do is I'm just gonna control C, come up here, and uh, you can add it to no hoist. So we'll paste in that and paste in here. So now we will not hoist React Native elements and it should be in the same directory. And we're just gonna say remove RF, and yep, that's exactly right. So uh, I wanna kill the node modules in this directory, and I also wanna kill the node modules in uh, the root directory, so I'm gonna run this. And the reason for that is uh, when we do a yarn install, it makes sure it installs everything in the right place. If I just run yarn install without killing them, it's gonna see, all right, we already have React Native Elements installed, we don't need to do anything. So my experience is you need to do that. And then go ahead and just run yarn install, and then run yarn start, and I'm gonna refresh on the Android emulator uh, and see if that works. So that did the trick for me, and now I have a gray button up here that we can click on, and uh, if we come back over here, you can see button pressed in our console. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.